Uh, I'll say something that the Bitcoiners are going to love. Not your, not my keys, not my money, not my coins, not my money. I, I believe in the the biggest thing you asked me earlier, right? The what's the one thing that people can do to protect their money? And I, I actually glossed over the the right answer, which is to remove as much counterparty risk from your life as possible. Remove as many intermediaries that you don't trust between your assets and you as possible. It may mean. For example, if there, you think there's a banking crisis coming, well, you know, if your local credit union or regional or community bank isn't offering you really good rates on your on your money, and you can get, you know, for example, we're, we're struggling this, with this here in the United States. Let's just uh, let's just think about this for a second. You know, you can get five point five point four percent on three month money from the, the Federal Reserve with a tre- Treasury Direct account, right? Or you can get, you know, like for example, my local credit union, I can get seven month money on a CD. At four point nine percent. Now I can, if I'm if I'm thinking locally for my community, what's better for me? Is it the extra fifty basis points or sixty basis points I can get from the Fed, or is it giving those sixty basis points to my bank to shore up their balance sheet because they're not giving it to me in my passbook savings account where they're still giving me you know a quarter point? Clearly, they can't give me more than a quarter point, but they can provisionally give me you know short term money at higher rates while they you know, try to figure out whether the Fed is going to pivot or not. So I think that, you know, this is the kind of thing we should be really uh, mindful of. So I love gold and I think gold is going to wind up being a, a really important part of the next monetary system. And the BRICS and the Global South are making these noises. I think a lot of that stuff is overblown and overhyped as well. I think the de-dollarization meme is overhyped and overblown as well. Why? Because who's hostile to the dollar? Think about who's hostile to the dollar. Think about who's hostile to the United States. Think about who's actually setting the policy for the United States. Stop thinking of Joe Biden as a bumbling idiot and think of him as an absolute vandal and traitor. And then, and same with Janet Yellen, and then reframe. Even if you don't believe that, entertain that idea, then look at the world and tell me what model fits better. And when you do that, you'll realize, oh, okay. This is what I think is happening. And even if you don't, again, you don't have to agree with me on this. I'm, these ideas I'm putting in your head on purpose in order to you know, spur thought. You want to start thinking about, well, how can I shore up my local community? How can I improve my odds of surviving this? Because this is going to be a really ugly period in history. And that's where I, I you know, ultimately that's where I land on this. And so gold is absolutely a part of that. You know, is it the only part of it? No. But eventually you're going to find the Federal Reserve is going to want to put gold out on the yield curve in order to deal with the U.S. debt situation. The best way for the United States to deal with their fiscal problems at this point is to issue, as Donald Trump and Mnuchin were saying seven years ago, 50 and 100 year bonds. What they didn't say was that with a 5% gold redemption clause, and then that allows for them to issue a 2% dollar coupon with a 5% gold redemption clause. And then says, hey, man, we can we can stop suppressing the price of gold. Well, never they're never going to pay that gold out. They're just going to promise it. And then they'll buy those bonds back when they fall in, when they, you know, they, they when they rise in price and they'll never pay them out. But it's so the same thing with that Greenspan did when he bought out the, th- the 13% 30-year notes that Volcker issued. Just think of that model, which is really what solidified the dollar reserve standard. The same thing's going to happen in reverse with gold. So I think I think that's the future, and if because if the Fed doesn't do this, and the BRICS do do something similar to that, and the Russians and the Chinese and even the Indians finally uh, you know, own up to how much gold they really have, as opposed to how much they say is on their books, when they do that, they're going to force us to do it anyway. So let's get everybody prepped for it by raising interest rates really quickly, breaking all the leverage, and depowering the people who are trying to get us, you know, onto a shame-based monetary s- system. And so strategically, like if I was Powell, this is exactly what I would be doing. If I ran the Fed, this is what I would do. And I'm not, not even because of, of, of my ideological bias. If I were Powell and I worked for the New York Money Center banks, which is who he works for, those are the primary shareholders of the New York Fed, which is the most powerful of the 12 regional banks. This is what I would do. I don't think that there's any other option. Now, how you sell it to the world is one thing. So that's the way I... Way I see this, so I, I, you know, absolutely everybody should have some allocation to physical gold. Remove as many financial intermediaries, uh, intermediaries between you and your money as possible. You know, if you can get your uh, your stocks registered in your personal name, take them out of common name. So, 
in order to keep them from being shorted against you or count as the brokerage's assets. So at least you have legal claim to them if the brokerage goes under, blah, 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 blah. I, these are all things that everybody should have done in prepar preparation for 2008. I think you should, we have to get back to that then uh, again. Hi, I'm Tom Luongo, and you're watching Think Smart Education.